Cheap doesn't always mean nasty. Let's build a DCC based accessory decoder. I've spent a ton of time experimenting with a lot of electronics in the past month or so. This is to help the modeler understand with a limited budget and limited knowledge like myself, what can actually be achieved. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I give away a few, a few other tips and techniques and other electronic goodness. Enough of the waffle, let's talk about it. So what can an Arduino based DCC accessory decoder be used for? In its basic form, the sky is really the limit with it. As you've seen in previous videos, I have used them to turn on and off other circuits, like my MP3 player from my last week's video, and also my lighting effects on my Barham Town, which you can see in the background here. So let's get into some of the hardware and tech that is gonna be required. So this project, we can either use an Arduino Uno R3, like what I've got in my hand here. You can also use an Arduino Nano also. So we can bring our five volts into the Arduino world from the DCC side of things. You need this little guy, which is a DCC to Arduino interface. So on the screen is the Arduino IDE. The sketch I'm going to upload is from a video from Rudy's hobby channel and I will give the link in the description below. So first of all, we're gonna look at some of the different parts to the sketch. Now I didn't write this sketch, that's something I'm not very good at, but I sort of have a rough understanding about the various parts of a sketch that are important. So I'll go through some of those with you now. So in line number one, what we need to do, we need to define the number of accessories you want to control. So this is currently on six. So what we mean by the number of accessories or the array is how many different DCC addresses that we want to load into this Arduino effectively. This particular Arduino, we can have up to 16 addresses, but as I said, I'm only going to be looking at using the six at this point in time, just for ease, and it's just a little bit easier to manipulate around, and it's a little less confusing to start with. Okay, so this next line, so lines 15, and in particular line 21. So if you're a Roco Z21 user like I am, for some reason, stock out of the box, they have a four address offset. So what I mean by that is, if you want address number one in the Roco world, it's gonna be address number five for some reason. Now, I have no idea why this is the case now, so please, if someone does know, please comment below and I'll be very interested to know why. In any case, within the Z21 uh, maintenance tool, um, which is on the PC, you can actually turn this off, but if you want to remain with that uh, numbering schedule, you need to uncomment. So what do we mean by uncomment? It's just a matter of getting rid of the two obliques there in the line, and that'll show, that'll obviously then allow the, the program to read that particular line. So when it's got the two forward slashes or obliques like that, that means it'll over skip that line. So this is where the main magic sort of happens with the sketch. So this is the uh, configuration of the accessories. So these accessories for this very basic DCC accessory decoder or stationary decoder are just turning, a, pretty well just turning an electronic switch on and off. So turning an LED on and off or another module like I, how I've been using it. So each address has two lines to it. So what I mean by that is, so the first line, so let's have a look at this line 36, has the address of DCC address of number one but then it goes to the output pin is number 13. So what I mean by that is, is the digital pin output pin on the Uno is number 13. So this is how the configuration or from memory will look when you open the, the sketch up. So what all, all you need to do is to add sub, up subsequent addresses to make up this number six or 16 or, or even only three or two or whatever you wanna do. It's just a matter of now I've got the code here already. 
So you can either just go in and go control C and then control V. And then that's gonna give you a direct copy of that. But you just gotta to remember to increment not only the address, but also the pin. So address two will be on output pin number 14. So now you don't have to do these in order if you don't want to. So you can have all these, the different output pins going to, to different addresses or, or however you want to do it. So I've just decided one through to six and then I always note as I have in previous videos told you to just to keep a track of what DCC addresses you are using on some sort of spreadsheet or a written sheet or however you want to do it. So with that, you just go increment them through. So copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. And then it's just a matter of changing the array, which is the output pin to make sure we got the correct, we got the actual correct number corresponding. So what I mean by that is, so we've gone from address one through to six and this address number six on this particular version, I've made it pin number eight, output pin number eight. So once we have the sketch in and we've changed those few little parameters so we don't really need to touch everything else now all you need to go up and do is you got a few little buttons at the top here so the first one is the verify and the next one is upload so what a verification is if you've changed this code around a little bit what do you what you do you give it a verify and you'll see it will track down the bottom here and it'll just do its thing and it'll tell you if there's any issues with it which there isn't with this particular one. So at that point, we know we're good to go. So it's just a matter of pushing the upload. Same sort of thing, it goes through. So it's writing, so it's writing and reading. So this code is done and it hasn't come up with any errors. So it's, uh, it's all tickety-boo and ready to go, ready to be, uh, ready to be tested. So this diagram we've got here is the schematic in its very basic form. Now we're only using one LED just to simplify the just to simplify how I'm going to show the, the, the wiring to you. So this we've just got one LED just to simplify the wiring and how you do it with one. So up the top here we've got the DCC interface. So you've got your DCC1 and DCC2 coming in. So that's just like your track power that's coming in or your accessory bus, depending how you're gonna set this up. Now, I'm not really gonna go into the, the, the components on the board that's explained in my previous video, just the connections. So the two, two so the left and the right DCC input. Now I've got three outputs on the other side of the Optio coupler here. So we've got one that goes to the five volt of the Arduino and then we've got a DCC signal in so that's where all the magic starts happening on this pin here so this goes to pin number two which is what they in the Arduino world they call the interrupt pin then we've got a ground pin or the negative out here so then I've deliberately not shown how to, to power this so you can either power this up on the bench test we got the the silver little box here that is actually for the USB so that's what I'm using on this test here but out in the layout you probably want to like a three and a half mil I think they are uh, barrel connector which is like the little round ones and that can be five to nine volts I think from memory so then the other connections we got here so this did this pin here this a zero which is pin number 14 goes up to the LED then obviously you got to have your dropping resistor for uh, so you don't blow the, the, uh, the LED up and then you run the other side of the LED, so the, the, the negative side, into a the ground pin of the Arduino. Before we go over to the workbench, let's have a few words from my, from my sponsor, PCBWay.com. Over to you guys. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or an advanced electrical engineer, PCBWay have you covered. 
or you are seriously missing out. They are passionate about PCBs, but PCB Way do not stop there. They also offer 3D print, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing. They can do it all for a very competitive price. Check out their awesome services in the link below and also a special offer to anyone who supports my channel. Okay, so what we're looking at here is going to quickly test this rig. So you'll see on the video out here we got, with all the components on here, we've got the, the DCC interface or the homemade, my homemade version of it anyway. The Uno with all the, all the connections made and a very, very crude LED light board. So we'll just quickly take you over to the, the sh uh, screen sharing screen. So we're just going to be looking at switching addresses two and four, just what I chose uh, for s simplicity. So I'll switch on two. Now that's just a switch command of two from the DR5000 from Digikize, the command station I'm using on the bench. And you can see the LED there. Then on four, we've got a blue LED. It's a little bit fainter, unfortunately. It's just the way it is. And then it's just a matter we can switch them on. Switch, switch them off again, I should say, switch them back on. Now, this decoder, as I've explained, is pretty well just turning something on and off. So in previous videos, I've turned off my, my MP3 player that we did last week for my background ambient sounds for the last video. And also the video before that, I used this same sort of setup, uh, turning on my my background lights and my street lights in my bar I'm seeing. So if you wanted to switch anything, that obviously on that occasion we, we used uh, switching a an Arduino relay, because obviously we can't have 12 volts running through these pins. We can only have uh, several hundred milliamps off the whole board at five volts. So we, we switch 12 volts via the coil on the relay. So the possibilities are really endless with these little guys now. As we build on with subsequent videos in this series, I'm not quite sure how many I'm going to build, two or, th two or three probably videos. Um, we're going to look at installing different parts of the code or even different code to allow us to control uh, tortoise type motors and also servo type motors is what I'm looking at um, doing next. So that's the, the end of the video. Um, some takeaways from this video. I personally like these, building these little guys purely because they're nice and simple to build. And as you can see, I've used a few of them with various other projects that I've got going on my model railway. As always, I have sort of three questions that I pose to you and please, if you answer them, can you do it in the comment section below? So number one, is this the sort of system or would you consider building one of these DCC decoders for yourself? Number two, if so, what other tweaks have you used or would you consider using to make them better? And number three as always, and number three, if there's a way I can make the design better, either the way I've written the, the script up within the IDE or other ideas you might have for future videos for me. So make sure you comment below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you think it's a good video that feeds the, the very greedy YouTube algorithm. Make sure you also subscribe. That also feeds the little greedy algorithm to make sure let them know that's a good video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Techniques.